see if this works this time. So we're going to finish up problems two, three, four, eight, and nine from day four, and then we will do some quiz review practice. And we will do a parabola, and we will do a force question, and whatever else you guys have. We can do a couple, not a ton, but a couple. So we need to pick up right at where we left off here, which would be, so this is day four, number two. And all this content should be very fresh in your head because you literally just did your test on it. All right. So number two, find n for a series where a sub one is negative seven, d is 1.5, and your sum is given as negative 14. So I have a D, which means what type is this? Arithmetic, good. So you're going to glance at your formula sheet and the sum of a finite arithmetic series is S of N equals N and then A sub one plus A sub N divided by two. And you're going to just start filling in the information that you have, and you're going to have to generate a formula for the information that you don't. So this is very similar to one of your test questions you guys just recently completed. So I'm going to go negative 14 equals. We do not know n. That's okay. We know a sub 1 is negative 7, and we do not also know a sub n. I'm going to leave that blank. And then this is over 2. Let's simplify this and get rid of the two by multiplying it. So I'm going to be left with a negative 28 equal to n and then negative 7 plus something. So we need to go off to the side and establish what a sub n is equal to as a formula. So I'm going to come up here and say a sub n equals. You're going to pull your explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence, which looks like this. And you're going to substitute in as much as you can. And again, it's going to be algebraic. That's okay. It will work out. So we have a sub n equal to a sub 1 is negative 7, d is 1.5, and then n minus 1. All right, so you're going to distribute. And I have negative 7 plus 1.5 n minus 1.5. So I have a sub n as a formula is 1.5 n minus 8.5. And then you're going to slide that right into the space that we left below. So this is 1.5 n and then minus 8.5. So we are going to combine like terms. So I have negative 28 equal to n. And then 1.5n minus 15.5. And then you're going to distribute this. Coming up here where I have a little bit more space. So I have negative 28 is equal to 1.5n squared minus 15.5 and then n which leaves me with a resulting quadratic equation. So what does this need to be equal to? Zero, good. So you're gonna add the 28 over and now we have 1.5 N squared minus 15.5 N plus 28. And now I gave you a really quick shortcut to find what your N is. So you're going to place that right in your calculator, right into the y equals. So y equals of your calculator, you type that in and you're going to go directly to the table and you are going to find where it produces a value of zero. It should be a nice integer. Either seven or eight, I can't remember. Eight, yep, thank you. So your answer right off your calculator is n equals eight. Okay, so again, it was very similar to one you just did recently on a test where you have something unknown and you have to kind of take a side step and solve for it. All right, back up to the top now. We left off and did not complete. 
Number three, sequence that has three geometric means. So I have five, one, two, three in the middle, and then 80. So I have a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, a sub five. To establish my pattern, I plug into the explicit formula for a geometric sequence. Formula sheet. So a sub n is equal to 80. a sub 1 is equal to 5. r is what we're solving for. And 5 minus 1 is my power. So now you're going to keep going on this. So I have 80 equal to 5r to the fourth. Divide by 5 resulting in 16. So again, this works out nicely. So 16 is equal to r to the fourth. Therefore, you're gonna take the fourth root of 16 on your calculator, hit math, and find that option. And r is equal to two. So your answers, and you do not need to show this. So five times two would give me 10. 10 times two would give me 20. And then 20 times two would give me 40. How do you guys feel with that type still? Pretty good? Yeah, easy. So number four, your last one on the front here that we left off. Find the sum of the first 12 terms of the series. So that indicates that this is a finite series. So you need to establish as a geometric or arithmetic. Uh, close. Geometric, r equals two. So you're gonna do the sum of the first 12 terms is equal to, so we're gonna go a sub one minus a sub one times r raised to the n divided by one minus r. And again, that is directly off your formula sheet, so you do not need to memorize that. All right, you're going to type it in, and it's okay to leave it a decimal if it terminates. If it doesn't, we got to leave it as a fraction. It was like 2000 something, 2047.5. All right, guys, any questions or problems on the front? Those are easy, right? They should be. So last two we need to finish up from this review is eight and nine. And these also, you just recently completed, so we can go nice and quick. Seven, you may omit entirely. You're not responsible for that. But we do need to do number eight and nine. So number eight, determine whether the series is convergent or divergent. So this first sequence is geometric. What am I multiplying by? Good. So this is R equals two. Therefore, R is greater than one. Who remembers? Divergent, good. And that's gonna be content you're gonna to wanna to make sure you memorize prior to your exam, but you still got a little bit of time. So it's okay if you don't do it right now. Next type is also geometric, but your ratio is instead one half. So this is less than one. So therefore this series would be convergent opposites. And then next, letter C is not even geometric. This one is, yeah, this one's arithmetic and arithmetic is always divergent. Always divergent. All right, and then my last one is one you would have commonly done the comparison test for, but maybe you've noticed that those tend to always be the same as well. If you did your comparison test with letter D, it was one over N. And because you saw that a lot, one over N was always divergent as well. So it's fine at this point if you just had that memorized and you just said one over N is always divergent. All right, so that leaves us with number nine. 
Binomial expansion theorem is on your formula sheet. However, sometimes it's just easier to remember your little pattern to get this set up. Okay, this is gonna be big. Number 10, you may cross off, so feel free to make use of that space. So I'm gonna start this with four, choose zero. And then I take the two and I raise it to the fourth. And then I take the D and I raise it to the zero. And then the pattern is the first exponent decreases, second exponent increases. So plus, next term, four, choose one, two, to the third and D to the first plus four, choose two, two to the second and D to the second plus, I'm gonna go down below because I'm clearly out of space. So now I'm gonna go four, choose three, two to the first, and D to the third. And lastly, four, choose four. And this would give me two to the zero and D to the fourth. Okay, so I'm gonna get all these terms and add them together when I'm done. All right, so my first, four, choose zero is one. Two to the fourth is 16. And anything to the zero power is one. Next. Four choose one is four, two cubed is eight, and then D. Next, four choose two is six, times four, times D squared, followed by down below, four choose three, my pattern would be a four, two, D cubed, and then four choose four is one, times one, and D, to the fourth. Okay, so this answer, where can I fit this? I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna say answer. I get 16 plus 32D plus 24D squared plus 8D cubed plus D to the fourth power. All right, how do you feel on those guys? Pretty good, confident? All right, so our remaining time we can spend on reviewing concepts for day one and two for your quiz. What are we starting with? Which one, ladies? The parabola or the force? I don't care, someone pick. Parabola, oh, okay. So the first review problem that was requested was a Parabola, which I must say is a very good choice. So we're going to do a parabola question first. I'm going to pull you a fresh one. Okay. All right, so a parabola question. So this is from chapter 10, which is your conics. So I am going to give you x plus 5 squared and equals negative 8. And then how about y minus three? We need all the critical information on that. So everything you are accustomed to finding would be required. So to begin, I should establish, what is my vertex here, guys? Good. Negative five, positive three, awesome. Next thing we should establish is which type of parabola is this? Does it open up and down or sideways? Up and down and then specifically down. She's right. 
So this is going to be your parabola that opens down. Why? Because my p-value is good. So we already know that now. Why don't we find that? So 4p is equivalent to the negative 8. So therefore, my p is going to be 2. And again, I need focus, directrix, axis of symmetry. So now you need to make your sketch. Negative five, three. Is my vertex. And I'm gonna make it open down. Remember that your focus is always in the interior of this. So in this particular case, my focus is right here. So I'm gonna count down to like that. So here's my focus, and how many units do I go up for the directrix? Two. And this goes across like so. Okay, so focus is always inside of it, and then directrix is never intersected by it. So my directrix must be written as an equation. So this is y equals. So focus was three, and then up from that would give me y equals. Yeah, good. And then the coordinates of my focus. So focus is at, good, negative five, one is correct. And then we need one more piece here and that is the axis of symmetry. So you're gonna just take your pen and you're gonna create a mirror image that divides it in half. So right down the middle, this also must be stated as an equation. So my axis of symmetry is x equals, yes, negative five, awesome. Um, well, I, you already had the equation. Oh, you mean from the picture back to the, not today. Most of the time, the only time we add more to this is when you have to complete the square first to get to that, which today you don't need to do yet, but we will review that again. Good question. No problem. Um, fourth question? Okay. Let's do up a fourth question. So for fourth questions, what are we sketching? Parallelograms, absolutely, because then you can utilize all of those geometric relationships. So I'm going to summarize these so you don't have a ton of writing to do. So we're going to say that you have a force of 850 newtons and 480 newtons. So I'm going to draw a parallelogram. And I just said... 850 newtons and 480 newtons. So here's 850 and 480. And then I'm also going to tell you that the angle between the forces is 34 degrees. So this is 34. Now, when you were in geometry, you learned that a parallelogram does not necessarily have bisected angles, so we can't use that. But you did learn that in a parallelogram, consecutive interiors are supplementary. So this angle is what you wanna go with, and that's 146. Resultant force is across from that, so this is X. It's often helpful to pull one of these off to isolate it so that you can see what type of relationship you have. So I have X is unknown here. I have a 146 degree angle across from that. I have 480 as my first force. I have 850 as my second. All right, so glancing at your formula sheets. Which geometric relationship um, do we have up here? Yep, so law of cosines, cos side, angle side. 
So this is going to be cosines. And again, you're going to use that in all cases where you're able to obtain a side angle side relationship. So I'm going to start to set this up. So you can use a squared if you want. I realize I just wrote that with x. Doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to go x squared equals. I'm going to add the sides. No, the order doesn't matter. So I go 480 squared plus 850 squared minus 2 times 480 multiplied by 850 cos of 146. And all it is from here is calculator work. You may type the entire thing in and then square root the answer. And then you should get 1,276 points. I got 4774. I wanted to be really accurate on this. You don't need to go quite that far for your quiz and for your final, okay? If you want to, you certainly can. Because then, again, the answer that follows will be more accurate. So now I owe you a part B to this. Hmm? So I would like you for part B to find the angle between the resultant and the larger force. So angle. I did square root it. Oh, 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 thank you. Yes, you definitely have to square root that to get that answer. Um, so what was I saying? So angle between resultant and larger force. So angle between resultant and larger force. All right. So the larger force meets the resultant right there. So here's why. So I have this relationship. And now I know this one as well. Okay, so glance at your formula sheet. And what is this one? Law of sine shift. It's in the upper right hand corner of your formula sheet. So I'm going to use law of sines. So we are going to go 1276 point. Here's your decimal divided by the sine of 146 is equal to, and then I'm going to go 480 divided by the sine of y. You are going to cross multiply solve. And then to get rid of your decimal, you're going to do second sign of that decimal. So if you've done this correctly, this results in an answer of 12.1 degrees. How do we feel on parallelograms and force? Pretty good, guys? Okay, so I got to watch my time, but do we need anything with polar? Um, do we need anything with like vector and magnitude or vector equation? It is. Yeah. All you do is literally plug right into that one. Yes. And you just leave it like that. Yes, you do. Yeah. Vector equations, the first formula on the upper left hand corner. Yep, Max. Yes. Absolutely. If it opens left and right, it's going to be y squared. Excellent question. Or left. Yes. Towards the negatives. Yep. That's okay. It's okay. Sometimes we don't. You sometimes you have to do a lot of these to get those deep connections, you know. So it, it's okay. Now you see. Now you know. Um. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um. So with the polar. On your formula sheet, you want to always make sure you're, you know, looking for these. Um, we also know that's not on there, but all you do is square it, that that is an identity. All right, so you've got something like that. So 
I'll give you like an equation. So say you have x squared plus y squared equals 144. And you want to change this from rectangular into polar. So you're looking to omit the x and y and change them to r and sometimes beta as well. So what could I sub in for x squared plus y squared? You got it, r squared equals 144. And again, my answer would just be 12. So you can see something like that. Um, you could see something like this as well. Where was it? Then you have something like um, 3x minus 3y equals 1. What do I replace x with? R cosine theta. What do you replace y with? R sine theta and then equals 1. It's someone mowing the grass, I think. Um, does that help? Yes. Yes, you may. No. Um, I think I gotta stop you guys there. Are we good? Yeah, you're good. I know you're good. So if you finish quick, come up, turn them in, and get started on your Delta Math assignments, which cover topics three and four that we did this week. All right. But do a lovely job on your quiz, of course, partial credit. You got this.